concepts. And my question now to you is, what is the difference between multi-inter and transdisciplinary science? I hope you understood it by my explanation. But then discuss a little bit when and why we would choose one of the, of the other. So when would you say, ah, a multidisciplinary approach is not enough. We need an uh, a interdisciplinary approach. Or suddenly say, oh, we actually need to have a transdisciplinary approach to address the question, in, uh, the question we have. So just think of the projects that you have been discussing now and see kind of at what stage would you make it interdisciplinary or, or transdisciplinary, okay? Do, does anybody have questions when it comes to the, to the concepts, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary? Is it clear to you? Mm. Yeah, okay. So then you can just continue by discussing kind of what makes it and when would you include the transdisciplinary into your research? <coughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. I hear you have a lot of good discussions. <laughs> <laughs> when and why? Why would you in include uh, a kind of a stakeholders in the project? Ask you. Uh, we didn't get so far, but we were thinking uh, like towards like if we start in a series on a project first, for example, on a licensed ecosystem. Um, then it's like kind of, it's, it's for example, can be a subject for one discipline, then uh, 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 extend uh, to, for example, include social or economic aspects and then become uh, interdisciplinary. And then if they want to have uh, to apply uh, some of the results of the research, then it will become transdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. need so later in the kind of research program, yeah. you will kind of involve more actors. Yeah. What about you? What was your consideration? When and why would you include people, mm -hmm. others than researchers? Mm -hmm. Are we talking like um, also sort of like when you have like a bigger project should be transdisciplinary mm -hmm. because you, yeah, um, if it's based on like, yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> I lost the train, but yeah. Basically, when you have a larger project, like or your project has like a large impact, you should be included, like transdisciplinary side. Yeah, impact is a key word that you get back to. So very much often to ensure that you get impact, you want to involve the right actors, especially when you talk about moving towards management mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. That's a new idea. Anybody who wants to bring to this something? A revelation in the discussion. I'm not going through all of you now. Traditional so, ecological knowledge. Yeah. Like from locals and uh, the knowledge they already have in that area, for example, is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that knowledge is brought in rather early. For instance, you start to develop an ecological model and you lack data and information. So you would bring traditional or local knowledge in to kind of say, assess. Did you have a lot of this species? You, because you want to develop a model and you have some uh, estimates and, and you have some data, but you lack information and you perhaps make a, have a prior, you have a, an assumption of what it is. And this uh, information from local people can provide you, provide you with some kind of distribution around your, around your estimate, saying not bigger than this, but certainly bigger than that. You know, so you would get the correlation model or something to get the information to fulfill and and develop the model further. So not only necessary at the end, but also if you lack information of the system, it's good to bring in stakeholders. But as a rule, we are more likely to bring in stakeholders when the questions are directly related to management or societal challenges. OK, I then thought I would just show you kind of here um, uh, the, the, now we, we, this is the Morton paper that you have hopefully read. It's kind of summarizing what we had earlier, uh, what I showed you earlier. And they were very much talking about the different skills that you need to develop. So just kind of handling transdisciplinary uh, teamwork means that uh, at transdisciplinary research, you need to have teamwork skills as well. Uh, but 
it might look very neat and nice to start with. You know, we have a very clear idea what what kind of project you have. It is a transdisciplinary project because you involve both uh, research, interdisciplinary research uh, and uh, industry representatives and manage managers. So this is an example of, of how they kind of plan the project to start with, where it looks rather kind of still handable in a way, uh, rather well structured. But during the project, when they run the project, they say, oh, but we lack people to help us with the model. Or we lack people to tell us what they really need. Or they even need to know what interface they want to have of the decision support tool. This is on climate adaptation in the US. And you see they add uh, additional uh, stakeholders, so non-corporate and corporate stakeholders, and education stakeholders, the teachers at schools and so on, that are supposed to bring in this knowledge into the syllabus and so on. But they have all these uh, different uh, ad hoc groups as well, scenario development, uh, seed deployment tool. So they have ad hoc groups that they say, oh, we need this. Uh, that what not, was not necessarily um, planned to start with because they had a much more rigid structure to start with. Um, I think one of our challenges when developing these big projects is that we're not necessarily having the best structure available up front. Perhaps because we are running out of time and writing the proposal and so on. But there are some solutions to that, and I will get back to that a little bit later. This is, again, a different way of showing what is disciplinary, multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, and transdisciplinary. Uh, just to, s and, and as I mentioned, we see that when we get to transdisciplinarity, the stakeholder involvement gets very important. And there are this kind of stakeholder involvement has also several names. Uh, we already saw kind of participatory uh, um, participatory uh, research, but now we talk about involvement, so it's more interactive, we assume, and we talk also about co-creation, co-development, co-design, uh, and now in Horizon. Uh, uh, Europe, they talk about multi-actor approach. Mm. And they say almost all, and that is a word that comes from agricultural research in Europe already in the 85. And it depends a little bit who was in place when these programs were developed and uh, which fields of uh, representatives were writing the documents and also who was actually in the administration at the time. So we see that now from in Horizon 2020, it was co-creation. In Horizon Europe, it's multi-actor approach. By far meaning exactly the same, but having a slightly different traditions when from the field where, where it was developed. So the multi-actor approach was very much developed in the agricultural realm to start with. Okay, so the stakeholder is an institution, organization, a group or a group that has some interest in particular sector or system. So it can be almost anybody, depending on the problem matter that you have. And the reason we bring stakeholders in is, of course, because of their knowledge and their interest. Uh, and I just here want to highlight, for instance, when FAO was developed this guide, developing this guide on how to develop climate adaptation plans for fisheries and aquaculture, stakeholders are key. Because they are the ones who are, in the end, uh, using these climate adaptation plans to ensure that their activity is, is still running. A good tool for you also if you work on, aqu on uh, any fisheries and aquaculture uh, in uh, where climate is kind of a part. Anyway, so uh, the strengths with involving stakeholders is that you uh, ensure that what you are doing is relevant for the people and that, that, for instance, a decision support system provides the information that is relevant. We were developing decision support for, um, for the uh, salmon aquaculture in Norway, and we gave them uh, some forecasts, 
and we brought them to the meeting and we say here is the annual mean of the temperature here's the annual mean of water coming flooding and um, possibilities of extreme events but what they tell us hmm, we don't care about the mean temperature we want the maximum and the minimum temperature so the modelers and the, the decision the, uh, the support decision tool uh, developers had to go home and provide the data the maximum and minimum forecast and also change the interface so that it was easy for them to to find these numbers now that said our challenge when it comes to uh, environmental models has been that they are on the on the realm of 10 the square is 10 times 10, 10 kilometers and the aquaculture producer wants to have something within a 10 kilometer square so the resolution is not necessarily good enough yet mm -hmm. but anyway that's a typical example of how important it is that we have people on board to start with so that we provide what's needed it of course ensures that there's because we know each other we develop things together we build trust and it's and our stakeholders are more likely to relay to trust or use what we developed for instance we had this uh, project uh, Climbfish, and we brought people from, uh, we had a Greece case study, we were in Heraklion, we brought the, the stakeholders on board and we asked them, hey, we are developing this decision support tool for you on aquaculture production uh, and asked them, how should we frame it? Should we make it like around one farm, like typical farm, or should we develop it around Crete, or would you like some other area? And then the uh, partners, there was the, uh, some producers and the ministry present, and they were discussing zoom, 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 in Greece. I didn't understand. And suddenly they go, the whole Greek archipelago. And I went, uh-oh. And I looked at the program at one end and the decision support tool maker. And, I went, and they go, and then the case study, and all of them kind of. <laughs> so we said, OK, we fix it. So we developed this decision support tool for Greece that actually has been applied now to the ministry. Uh, the problem, of course, was that, and in some cases, when there is very little technology available up front, that this tool that is meant for kind of drafting five and ten year old plans is used for kind of the annual need. And perhaps the model wasn't really developed for that. So that is kind of can be a challenge then. So include their knowledge, knowledge and their priorities and it's also when involving the stakeholders you know if we would just publish things in in journal papers first thing they might not even get it the other they might not read it and finally even if they read it they might not understand it because the language and the format is not that accessible as a meeting would be where there is opportunities for dialogue and it means also that there is buy-in or stakeholder ownership that is then also promoting the dissemination and the implementation of, of, of the project and also impact, of course. This is now the climate adaptation plan that I referred to previously, but this would go, go for any, any project in a sense. Okay, so how can we conduct research across academic boundaries and together with people? So the question is, how do we what are the practical, what would you do in practice to ensure this involvement of both several science, sciences and the stakeholders? And now I by far refer to the paper on the practical design of the social ecology. No, no, the paper on 10 tips. Um, most of these people have been working on climate adaptation projects, the, the people who are authors of this paper. So think about what, what do you need to do to get this going? You may also think about your skills, what you need to be able to do. 